Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn one of the important tools that is widely used in industries that is 8D. 8D problem solving methodology is an industry standard approach for corrective action and continuous improvement in Lean Six Sigma. The name 8D represents the 8 disciplines in problem solving. It comes from the 8 structured steps that guide teams through identifying, addressing and preventing reoccurring issues. 8D is widely used in manufacturing, automotive, aerospace, healthcare and service industries, particularly when dealing with reoccurring quality issues, product defects or customer complaints. You will learn each step in detail by applying 8D to a real world problem, identifying common mistakes at each stage and learning how to mitigate those mistakes. So let's begin. Let's take a real world problem that will help us to understand this 8D implementation. It is a high defect rate in an automotive manufacturing process. The problem statement is, a car manufacturing plant has observed a 15% defect rate in the assembly of engine components, which leads to the increased cost and customer complaints. Now let's see for this problem how we are going to use the 8D problem solving approach. The first phase is the preparation phase that is represented by the D0. D0 is prepare and collect preliminary data. Why this step is important? Before forming a team and starting the problem solving process, it is essential to gather the preliminary data to understand the problem scopes, severity and initial patterns. The next part is how to collect this preliminary data. It can be the customer complaints and defect reports from the last six months. We can also have the production data that talks about the defect rate trend over time. We can also have the supplier and material quality reports as well as process flow diagrams and work instructions for assembly. We can also note down the initial observations like defects are concentrated on assembly line 3, most defects occur during the fitting of the engine components or incoming material variation suspected as a potential issue. What are the common mistakes that are happened from the professional during this preparation phase? Rushing into problem solving without understanding baseline data and relying on opinions instead of actual data. How we can avoid these common mistakes and for that reason we are going to review the mitigation plan. We can use the data driven analysis tools like Pareto charts, control charts to validate the issue. And one more important thing, we can also involve the shop floor operators and engineers to gather the first hand insights. Once we are ready with preparation and preliminary data in our hand, then we can move to the next step, which is D1, establish the team. Why is this step important? A well-formed cross-functional team brings diverse expertise to tackle the problem effectively. A single department cannot always identify and resolve the root cause alone. Let's talk about the problem that we have initiated to use the 8D. Here, we can have the team members from production manager who understand the process. We can have the quality engineer who monitors defects. We can also have the maintenance technician who evaluates equipment issues. We can also have the supply chain specialist who reviews incoming material quality. Along with them, we can also have the Lean Six Sigma expert who provides problem solving methodology. While forming the team, please make sure that we are having all those critical stakeholders who are going to help us in problem solving. Now let's talk about the most common mistakes that professionals are doing during this step D1. Selecting a team with insufficient expertise or authority and lack of clear roles and responsibilities. And how we can mitigate this risk? By ensuring diverse functional representation and assign specific roles and communicate expectations clearly. Once we define the cross-functional team, then go to the step 2 that is D2, describe the problem. What is the objective of this step? A well-defined problem statement ensures everyone understands the issues clearly, enabling focused root cause analysis and effective solutions. Let's understand this step for the example that we have initiated. What is the issue here? Engine assembly defects. Where the issue occurred? At the assembly line 3. When it was occurred? From past 3 months. What is the impact of this issue? 15% rejection rate, increasing rework cost by $200 per quarter. 
At this stage, we can also enhance the problem definition by using the techniques like SMART, where we are going to create the SMART statement. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant and Time Bound. We can also use the another technique that is called as a is, is not tool. Now let's talk about what are the common mistakes that professionals are doing while performing this step D2. They are defining the problems too broadly or vaguely. In some cases, ignoring the data driven insights. We can avoid those mistakes by having the mitigation plan like use smart problem statements, utilize data analysis tools like Pareto charts, histograms to quantify the issue. After defining the clear problem statement, we can move to the step number D3, which is develop interim containment action. Why is this step important? While working on a permanent solution, we must implement temporary measures to minimize the impact of the issue on production and customers. Let's understand this step D3 for the problem that we have initiated. The containment actions implemented are increase manual inspection of engine components before assembly and additional quality checks at critical assembly stages. As a part of this step 3, we are going to calculate what is the risk number that is associated with that failure and what is the reduction of the risk number when we are going to initiate the containment action. As the name indicates, these actions are temporary until permanent corrective action is taken. Now let's understand what are the common mistakes that professionals are doing at this step D3. Confusing containment with the permanent solution and not verifying if the containment actions are effective. We can mitigate those mistakes by taking an actions like ensure containment is fast, reversible and monitored. We can also set up a feedback mechanism to track effectiveness. Once we implemented the interim containment action, we need to move to the next step which is D4, identify root cause. Due to time constraint, let's continue learning of remaining steps in 8D into the next video. If you found this information useful, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for your valuable time and see you in the next video.